watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network. USA International for the Fuel Jeff Hill Trailer Sales Series. I'm Josh Laston, and with me tonight is Mr. Carl Henderson. Hey everyone, first time calling a fuel race, but uh, feel really familiar calling with you, Josh. So uh, looking forward to this one. Uh, this is a really awesome track. This is, you say it's awesome, but right now we are sitting on 35 drivers on a track that isn't even a mile long yeah i'll tell you what man you know I, I ran i ran the full practice just now all two hours and the the car does some funny stuff here um it, it it'll try to it gets really unsettled uh while you're on the uh, straightaways um you know when you try to get on your brakes it's still kind of recovering from being unsettled and It'll get loose on you on corner exit. Um, it, it's, it's challenging to drive, but it was a lot of fun. Well, and that's the big thing that we're going to need to watch tonight. We have a very, very loose setup. So it's going to be interesting because it's a short track. It's barely over a half a mile, and we're going to have a lot of cars. And well, I will I say this. A I mean, lot it, of cars. It's 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 loose on corner exit. However, on on entry, it can get a little tight on you, depending on uh, where your brake bias is and, and whether or not you're hitting the breaking point. Um, you know, we, we did a a small little pit party earlier uh, uh, during practice to kind of see how things are run. And you know, it's tough if you're on that inside line. You know, you get pinched down. You ride up just a little bit, and you got an accident there. Well, as we have qualifying underway right now. And needless to say, there are some guys out there putting down amazingly fast laps as Michael Stroll is currently sitting in pole position with Blake Gordon right behind him. And I, honestly, I'm seeing lap times nearly a half second faster than what I saw in practice today. So we're yeah. looking at... Uh, 21 and a half seconds as our pole time. I'm starting to wonder if these guys were sandbagging during practice. <laughs> I know they didn't have a clean track, but he, hey, even Nick Adams there with a 21.92. Um, I, I don't think during practice Nick ever got below with 22. So um, uh, lots of fast laps getting laid down right now. Well, and here's the thing, and it's something that's a little bit different in terms of fuel in comparison to the other leagues we run is they do tend to reset the time of day on tracks to where it could be cooler than it was running in practice right now but we've only seen about half of the field set down a lap to where only 18 people and as I say that Alan Elwood moves Blake Gordon back into third Although those top three right now are tight, we've got a 21-5 even, um, a 21-5-2, and a 21-5-3. Those guys at the top right there are neck and neck. And honestly, one of the things that we're going to see a lot of tonight, unfortunately, it's just inherent to short track racing. There's going to be a lot of beating and banging, and... I don't expect the arrow of any of these cars to look like it did does right now, probably even halfway into the race. 
Yeah, you know, but it's 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 a trade off, right? You know, sure, there's going to be a little bit more, uh, uh, we'll call it thumping um, at this track versus you know a mile and a half or something like that. But um, you know, you can go out there and run without a hood on. Um, you know, maybe not as easy as you could somewhere like Martinsville, but um, you know, it, it's it's the arrow is not as important here. But what I'm hopeful for is that you know, this being a league that doesn't have fast repairs, which uh, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that. Short tracks tend to have a lot of incidents, uh, right? Uh, you know, you're gonna have you have time to have a lot of cautions. I'm hopeful these guys realize they're gonna have one fast repair, or sorry, no fast repairs, and they're going to be very cautious about this uh, rather than just kind of going in, you know, hard as they can. Well, and we have 150 should be fast laps, but it's still 150 laps that these guys are gonna have to keep those cars clean. And at least running. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. I ran 150 laps, just over 150 laps in practice. Um, and I, I was almost at my computer the entire time. Um, and that was, I mean, that was about an hour and a half. So <laughs> if we stay green flag, we might have a very long race. But I think it's going to be an awesome race. I can't wait. Um, I, I think, you know, with a short track like this, even if you have someone that runs away from the field, uh, which I don't think you're going to see happen, but if it does... They're going to start hitting lap tracking. There's going to be guys with, with a field this large. I mean, racing each other. They're not just going to pull over and let the person by, um, you know, because they're racing, you know, each other for position. So I think you're going to see, you know, some you know, someone pulls ahead, second place might be able to catch right back up. Um, I think you're going to see a very dynamic race. Well, and you know what? I'm the Discord server for Fuel was lighting up earlier today with a lot of conversations. We are mostly surrounding the setup tonight honestly i ran some test laps i'm not going to argue that it is probably one of the most challenging setups i have ever run but that's actually what's going to make this race brilliant we're going to get to see what drivers have that adaptability because race setups they're never going to be perfect we don't have multi-million dollar engineers sitting here getting our cars ready. We're basically reliant, like this setup that we're using tonight, it's actually the default iRacing setup for Richmond. So Yeah, you know, and, 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 and uh, you know, saying that you know, how the setup feels challenging, I'm very hopeful that, and you know, we've seen this over and over and over again in both the leagues we race and the ones we cover, that a lot of times the tracks that are harder to drive, it seems that there are less cautions. And I think a lot of that has to do with guys driving very conservatively. You know, I, conservative doesn't mean that you can't pass people. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they should just line up. But um, I, I think with a more challenging track, you're going to see guys that are going to be very focused. They're not going to get lazy on, on their corner entries and their corner exits. No, and that's going to be the biggest thing that I'm hopeful for tonight in that some of these guys, again, it's 150 laps. You can't win it. Honestly, with the exception of maybe getting yourself into a close enough position to the front to be able to win, there's no reason to go out there and race hard for the first 100 laps tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think... Um, uh... You know, again, being a league without, a, without fast repairs, I think, you know, kind of, the, the first hundred laps or so are kind of the uh, the intro. Um, you, you've got to go out there. You've got to survive. Now, you, you don't want to go a lap down or anything like that. You don't want to put yourself in a bad position either and you know, lose, you know, because track position is going to matter here. Um, but you have to survive. Um, so I, I think you're going to see a lot of guys who are going to be very, very, I would say relatively conservative uh, those first hundred laps and then try to push it later in that uh, you know, finale there. Well, and again, we're talking about a very loose setup. Well, a tight to loose setup, which means corner entry, you're going to be under braking. You're going to, put a, going to be putting a lot of strain on those front tires. But then on corner exit, with it being loose, you have a very strong possibility of lighting up the rears. So... We've got a lot of tire strategy that's going to come into play tonight. And 
again, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this ends up working out for these guys. And yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. I wanted to be down there running tonight, and I'm sure you did too. But again, Adam's out tonight making his way back from North Carolina from spending time with his family. Larry's dealing with a very pregnant wife. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, I mean, well, honestly, hey, I think hey, we're in the better position. I think this is going to be a what? better race to watch than run. There, there, there is no scenario I'm be uh, going to bed tonight upset um, uh, like I could have been if I had gone out there and raced. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to say I'm upset about this. No, I like I said, I think I even I did say it in the Discord channel tonight. I've got a snack, I've got a beverage, I get to hang out with Carl. This is going to be an amazing evening, and hopefully for everyone out there watching it's going to be the same level of entertaining. I mean, this is going to be the uh, uh, second night in a row we've covered races together. Uh, why don't we just see if uh, Nick and Randy want to take the night off tomorrow night, and we'll uh, cover IBRL, and uh, who knows, maybe do the AOL truck race as well, and just, uh, uh, just keep it going. No, I can't do the AOL truck race. I've got a chase to worry about. But well, we are we, we are getting close to wrapping up qualifying here, about 10 more seconds, um, and then we should start gridding up. Yeah, we should be just on that verge of getting everything going today and getting to see. This is the first short track that they have run in the Fuel Premier Series, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so uh, are we able to run through uh, our starting order? No, because qualifying hasn't ended. Because they had, um, they still. It's saying it ended for me. Well, that's not good. <laughs> that's very much not good. Well. Um. Well, this is fun, I guess. Well, I apologize for that, everyone. Um, this is the. Uh... Uh, second week in a row, we've had technical difficulties. Uh, not sure why that happened, because uh, I've never seen you have a technical issue, Josh. I so, know, that's why this um, is interesting. So how, about, how about while you're working on that, I'll run through uh, our starting uh, order here. Um, on the poll, starting in first, we've got Thomas Bressy. Uh, on, uh, on his outside, we have Michael Stroll. In third is Alan Elwood, and uh, in fourth, Blake Gordon. Fifth is Cameron Hearn, and sixth is Braxton DeWeese. Seventh is Brad Slaughter Jr. Eighth, Brandon Bernhardt. Ninth, J.J. O'Dell. And tenth, Joe Dunsmore. Eleventh, Tyler Hensley. Twelfth, Justin Morton. Thirteenth is Hayden Pistorius. Fourteenth, Davey Hendricks. Fifteenth uh, is Delonte Ballard. Sixteenth, Casey Shue. Randy Bechdel is in seventeenth. And in eighteenth, Zach Edwards. Shane Therian in nineteenth. And Sean Carmody in twentieth. In 21st, we have Norm Pelletier. And in 22nd, Jonathan Gervin. 23rd, we have Boomer Logan. 24th, Kyle Cooper. In 25th is Nick Adams. And in 26th, John Doble. 27th is Brian Kidda. 28th, Blake Zidi. 29th, Eric Wineland. And in 30th, Travis McQuistian. 31st, we have Gail Brooks. 32nd is Christopher Matthews. Um, in 33rd, we have Cal Filarski. In 34th, uh, we have Tyler Dolger. And rounding out our field in 35th, we have Don Runkle Jr. Well, and just as you say that, I get things back up and running. Hey, hey as long as it's here for the race, I think, uh, I think we can't complain about that. Uh, we got all of the uh, cobwebs shaking out there, and we're good to go now. Well, and unfortunately, yeah, iRacing just does not like me today. But we are good well, look, to I... go. Let's get up to our leader as the pace car is going to peel off after one more lap here. And if we go, let's show the blimp here. Unfortunately, this is just large enough a track to where you can't really see 
how deep this field really is as I'm being told that we had someone crash already but I don't think that's accurate but the rear chase tells the story is we get ourselves to turn three and the rest of the field isn't even out of turn two yeah this is <laughs> come on guys let's give us a good race here um I, 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 it has the potential to be a really great one so just keep it clean guys let's get going but I am actually seeing I'm having some issues here with stream quality and I'm not sure why but there we go now we're no nope, we aren't climbing back Carl if you could call it while I try to fix my yeah, yeah I apologize um, I was trying to see if there's anything on uh, my end that I needed to change so yeah so um, uh, Thomas Bressy uh, you know able to jump out there to the lead um, Michael Stroll following close behind and Alan Elwood right there three uh, Blake Gordon uh, has fallen back to fifth. Uh, Cameron Hearn has overtaken the fourth spot from him. Um, you know, we got a lot of race to the field, and we got a caution out. Uh, Brad Slaughter was involved. Um, that is a guy who's had some bad luck uh, uh, in this series. Um, uh, don't know what happened there, but uh, I he can get us back. back there. It looks like Brad Slaughter had a bit of an issue, and there we go. Now we're back into the green. So let's see what happened here. Turn one and two. Just um, <laughs> the very first that we got to see is again, this is a setup. If you get on that too hot, you're gonna spin. Yeah, I, I, that 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 one wasn't on anyone else. That 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 was a uh, self spin. It, it happens, um, especially when you get you know really tight racing, and um, you know that's, that's what happened there. I, I was honestly with the kind of luck he's had, I was uh, expecting uh, him to have gotten uh, rear-ended or something there, but uh, uh, that one was on him unfortunately. But uh, he's going in a pit. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna have any repairs or not. Honestly, he didn't like he hit anything. Um, well, but, he uh, hit his he had his front end a little bit just into the wall, mm. but there's no harm right now. Taking tires is a an interesting idea right this early into the race, but when you have that kind of a spin, it may be worth it. But yeah, that I, front I, I end mean, yeah. is pretty much what I expect just about everybody unless we have one leader the entire time tonight. Oh, I, I, I think that that front end right there is going to be one of the good ones um, when this is all said and done. Um, the car transitions a lot. We didn't talk about this a lot uh, uh, in pre-race, but the car is going to transition a lot on a longer run. And um, I think, you know, it's going to transition at different uh, uh, places for different people depending on how they're driving it. So you're going to see some guys that are going to run into the back of other people because they're, you know, the person in front of them is braking earlier than they expect them to. I think you're going to see a lot of that tonight. Well, and again, every other race we talk about it, everybody's going to run this track differently. Even guys that are running similar times, some people are a slow egg entrance, fast exit. Some people like to carry as much speed through but also sometimes like we're just going to see so many different breaking points and the key for each of these drivers is to figure out exactly what the person in front of them is doing so they can change their plans accordingly to keep from rear-ending everyone. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, to a degree that's any track, but it's, it's, it's doubled when you've got this big of a field. Um, and, and, and again, I mean, uh, Look, I don't think we're gonna we're saying anything controversial here when I say this, but this isn't the ideal setup for this track. Um, it's not perfect. Um, you know, everyone's running the same setup. Um, I, and from what I saw in practice, again, there can be very good racing with this setup. Um, you know, I saw a lot of side by side, saw a lot of guys uh, making moves. Um, so if we can just keep it clean for a little bit and, and guys will be a little patient, I think we are gonna have one heck of a race. Well. And I think you just nailed it. And it's why I was harping on it a little bit earlier. It, the race is not going to be won on that first lap. Unfortunately, the first incident we saw was self-inflicted. 
but once you get into the race situation, you get a little excitable, and this is going to be who has the best throttle control as the pace car is off, and Thomas Baresi gets a great jump, gets a good two car lengths in front of Michael Stroll in second place. Blake Gordon is running around the outside, gets passed technically for the time being by Alan Elwood, but they're going to stay side by side as long as they can. But yeah, Blake I, I Gordon I, not getting down I, into that low line is going to cause some trouble for him. Yeah, I was about to say, I think, you know, Blake had really, no, I would say, very little chance of being able to make that pass, and, and now he's getting freight trained. Um, he's going to lose positions here. Well, as long as there is someone on his inside as Sorry, Blake, but we're going to just kind of watch this drop because you were the only person. And he actually lucks out a little bit there as Tyler Hensley gets a little bit into him and has to back off. And that gives yeah. Blake the opportunity to drop down. Oh, we've got caution out. Uh, Kyle Cooper, oh, this Boomer is, Logan, let me see. Wow. Uh, this is just all over. So this is the big one. And again we are early in the race so let's see what happens with kyle cooper oh that is i couldn't make out exactly what happened there let's see because he yeah, just it, ended up loose i think we need it, to go back no, a little uh, farther uh, uh, you were in the right spot. Take a look at the blimp view because um, it's when the 73 and hill. Uh, There's a right tap there. there. Yeah. And again, we're talking a very tight course, but uh, that was oh. the bigger one is not there. Blake ZD was involved in something here. Oh, he was just up along the wall and he slowed down, but it's that spin right there that just so much going on here that I can't even find it. Yeah, like everything happened at once. Um... So all of these guys just getting slowed down for that. And honestly, let's take a quick gander is yeah just getting put up into the wall you don't know how the car is going to drive and things just get loose yeah that, that, there were a lot of cars involved in that um and you hate seeing that because those are guys that you know I'm not, they're just out there trying to run their race and um uh, there were a lot more people involved in that than, than needed to be um and boomer but... logan's into the pits he's definitely got some damage I'm not sure if he's going to be getting back out anytime soon yeah I think there's probably several guys that have a lot of damage um, but some of them you know as long as the car will drive straight you know probably don't try to run your laps well honestly in that it's just a matter of does it drive straight enough on a track like this Yeah, it's absolutely true. We saw, um, you know, Joe Dinsmore, uh, uh, you know, earlier this season, the AOLL, you know, driving a, uh, a, a car up sideways at the Bristol Dirt Track. Um, so if you can get it around the track, by all means. Yeah, and you said Bristol, and especially at the dirt, it runs like a short track, and dirt is more forgiving, but honestly, with what we've already seen out of this, I think the best plan is even if you're already in there, you have the meatball flag, get the repairs done because there are going to be people that are going to wreck later. Just give in and you'll be able to get a much better finish. We saw that. I did that far too many times in the sportsman series for this league earlier that I'd be caught up in something park it get my repairs and still be able to finish in the top half because mine were early enough that once I got back out on track I could make up all the laps and at least finish the race 
Well, you know, you don't want to go more than a couple laps down. If you go more than a couple laps down, at that point, it's be very difficult to be a lucky dog and really gain anything back. Um, so, um, yeah, I think uh, the pace car's off. Uh, we're getting ready to go. As here. he goes early again, but everybody was ready this time to where he doesn't get quite the jump that he had last. But we're just seeing everyone fighting to get themselves down into that low line because they got to see what happened to Blake Gordon earlier and it's just an entire train that will get past you if you get hung up on the outside. Yeah, we're seeing that happen with some guys right now. I'm looking at Brandon Bernhardt uh, as having it happen to, uh, to him. And uh, who's that? That's 21, I think, as well, right there. Uh, I'm trying to find them on my uh, score. There's so many cars. No, um, that, that is Braxton DeWeese, who is stuck up out there. And. Looks like he may have the opportunity to slide in. He does. So the front 10 have all managed to get themselves in single file. And there's Brandon Bernhardt still stuck out there. Well, if anybody can make it work on the outside, it would be Brandon. Um, uh, Cause he's passed me on the outside multiple times. Um, in situations and, that you shouldn't. Yeah. Well, to, to, to be fair, though, just about everybody on this track right now has probably passed me on the outside because I am a lot slower than most of them. But we have managed to get ourselves pretty much side by side through the front, but not everyone has managed to get that done. And as we're seeing, our leader, Thomas Bressi, is nearly a half a track of Oh, in we front. got caught it out. And Caution is back out and looks like Mr. Chris Matthews. Maybe him and Kyle Cooper, I think, possibly got into it. So let's take a quick look. And yeah. Well, at least he was a bit of a gentleman and got him kind of straightened back out before he hit the wall. <laughs> but as we are moving that way towards another caution we are only we aren't even a third of the or a sixth of the way through this <laughs> let's go ahead take a quick commercial break and hear from one of the sponsors <laughs> a favor if you get a chance visit our sponsor rhino they make amazing truck accessories and if i had a truck i would have some but unfortunately all i drive is a tiny little 1.2 liter car because i drive 80 miles a day <laughs> and i do have to issue an apology i said that uh, it was uh, kyle cooper and chris matthews there that were involved in that i I think Kyle Cooper might have got the uh, later end of it, but the initial incident was between Boomer Logan and uh, Chris Matthews there. Um, so apologies to any Kyle Cooper fans out there watching. Uh, that, that was not him uh, you know, directly involved in the incident. So right now, the comments out there in the interwebs, the only people that are getting some cheering sections are actually Braxton De DeWeese and Michael Stroll. So, if anybody else is out there, you got to let us know who we need to be focusing on to keep you happy, even though right now Thomas Baresi is probably going to be giving us the most entertainment. Yeah, listen, if we, if we don't start getting some fans speaking up about who they want us to focus on, I'm turning on my webcam, and you guys are just going to watch me uh, call the race um, without seeing the race. 
I, I would pay to see that. <laughs> I may make you do that for a podcast on Friday nights. That'll okay, be our next fun race is Carl Henderson trying to do play-by-play and paint a pretty picture for everyone without actually getting to see the race. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's like calling a radio uh, broadcast. That, that'd be kind of fun at some point, I think. You know, I don't disagree with you. But in all reality, no one wants to hear us. They're here to watch some great racing as we have officially hit the one-sixth distance. We are on caution number three. I was about to say, uh, if they wanted to see some great racing, I'm hoping we're still going to have it. Um, You know, in in the spurts we've had, we've seen some really good side-by-side racing. We've seen some passes. Um, We've seen, I mean, there's some guys that have moved through the field already. I'm looking at uh, Eric Weinland's up 13 positions. Because we are uh-huh. green flag, and Thomas Bressy is wasting no time any at all on these restarts. And there's Blake Gordon starting in fourth, back out on that high line, <laughs> just hoping to keep pace with these guys. But Michael Stroll is not letting him get down, run his preferred line, and both of these guys are such fierce competitors. Unfortunately, neither of them do I ever get to run alongside them. But I have seen these guys run. They are just... Oh, we're wrecking it. We're wrecking it. And that looks like Mr. Travis McQuinston. Why do yeah, I keep trying to throw an end in there? Yeah, he, he was definitely involved, but I, I think he Let's might see. have gotten hit. Yeah, yeah. He, he got hit there. Yeah, um, he ended up getting spun. Let's do something a little interesting and get ourselves up into that cockpit. See, that didn't do what I wanted it to. Let's go to the roll bar. As you can only see a little bit of that car in the corner and that means he was blind to that. Yeah, I think that was the uh, 66. Um, Let's get this 66 from the front. 66 of Brian Kitta. Yeah. Um, looks like Brian Kitta just came up and, yep. Well, in all honesty right there, Travis, he was, a lo- he was lower coming out of that corner than is ideal. So, oh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's I, a I, racing I, I, incident without question but we got about a lap in and we are back under caution but these guys up at the front as painful as it could be sitting here running constantly under yellow flags they're not going to have to pit anytime soon they're able to keep their tires relatively fresh, but these Goodyears aren't necessarily known for constant heat cycling, so they are going to yeah. degrade. Well, and, and you know, it's interesting. I think at this point, um, there, there's a chance they might be able to make it on fuel at this point. Um, I, I think there's going to become an issue well before then, but it, it, it does raise the interesting question. If we could stay green... Do you take the risk of pitting um, and then going, you know, a lap or two down, and then you know, a potential caution comes out and you're in bad shape? Um, hopefully, we can stay green, and that we might get some of those questions answered. All right, we asked, and now everybody is chiming in to where, again, a lot of Braxton Deweese fans out there, and got one calling for Alan Elwood. Got John Gervin and Boomer Logan. I'm glad to see you guys are out there supporting everyone. It's a great time to get to call these, especially when we know that there are fans out there in internet land really trying to root these guys on and supporting their somewhat expensive racing habits. Yeah, I, I, I love it whenever people talk uh, to us because uh, I'll be honest, there's sometimes it feels like we're uh, talking uh, to, to nobody. I know that's not the case because, you know, I can see the viewership numbers, 
Um, but uh, yeah, keep, keep sending us comments. Uh, let us know what you think, um, and uh, you know, keep letting us know who you're uh, rooting for because you know we're still trying to learn uh, who uh, who has a fan club uh, out here, and, and I'm hearing a lot of people that do have fan clubs. And I'm really seeing that Braxton has a fan club because they keep chiming in, and that's great to see. He's running in the top 10 right now. He's going to have his work cut out for him to get himself up into the front as the pace car does peel off. And there goes Thomas Baresi. If anybody's out there watching the stream and actually running, he likes to jump real early. <laughs> well, you know, and that happens at short tracks a lot of times. You know, you, you, you don't want to risk. Oh, as we got caution. caution is out again. <laughs> oh, the, we're getting shorter and shorter. Well, it's about where I expected, but that was <laughs> Shane Theron getting caught up in, oh, he just got tagged coming into turn one. Luckily, that's just going to be a little bit of rear end damage. Nothing more than that other than maybe some uh, worn tires. But that's just one of those unfortunate missed breaking points and it's painful well, like said, to see for someone you're gonna see that here it's it's you're you're riding a fine line the entire time and i'm <laughs> i don't have the race uh radio turned on right now but i'm seeing a lot of the little uh pop-ups that they're talking and Radio's lit up right now. Um, I think there's probably some guys saying, uh, get it together, let's let's get some green flag laps going. Well, you know that things are bad when you see the message that they are uh, turning off in race chat, which <laughs> I've only seen happen once. And most of these guys have been racing together for ages, this league, definitely predates our involvement it's a really it's the proper mix in my mind of competitive trash talking and at the end of the day friendly uh, on, honestly I, I mean I, I can't say enough good things about the fuel fuel series as a league and um, I, I look at uh, both their discord channel and uh, in race chat it feels like what the closed circuit racing, our team, uh, our uh, chat and uh, our you know, in race chat and our discord, it's what it feels like. Um, it's very um, uh, respectful, but it's also uh, competitive and you know, it's gonna be some trash talking as well. And it's a lot of fun. Well, and what's racing with friends unless you're giving each other a hard time? Exactly, exactly. Um, and, and I think, um, the only thing I regret about uh, not being out there tonight uh, so far, uh, unless we're getting some green flag laps and I might start really regretting it, um, but uh, I'm not out there uh, talking trash about Nick Adams. Um, well, but uh, now you get to do it to a much more public audience. You know, that's a really good point. Um, I will say this, Nick is running in 19th right now. Um, he will not finish there, let's be honest. Um, oh, he's going one direction or the other. <laughs> there, there is um, no denying that that is what is in his future tonight. And yeah, for and, those and, out there, Nick is actually our teammate. We run with him more often than we probably should. I actually probably spend more time talking to him than many of my coworkers that I should be talking to. I won't say my wife because obviously she gets me any home hours, but Nick is one of those great personalities. If you want to hear him, check him out tomorrow night as him and Randy Pepper will be covering the IVRL and they will be at Michigan. It's going to be a great race. It's a little bit more competitive of an atmosphere in comparison to the fuel and a whole lot less friendly. But <laughs> they are some of the biggest and most competitive people I have ever seen on the racetrack. As the pace car peels off and again, goes right at the start line, gets a great jump as Blake Gordon is diving down the inside on Alan Elwood. 
And as we've seen, if he can keep him up there, even though Allen is getting just a nose in front, Blake isn't backing off. And if he can keep him out to his outside at all, as he gets a Allen gets a little squirrely coming out of four, Blake gets the position. Allen drops down to block any kind of run from Michael Stroll or Cameron Hearn. And now they are all three clear. And the next side by side is Michael Stroll and Cameron Hearn. And these guys are battling hard. Michael Stroll is right up along his side, trying to keep get as much speed and as short of a distance as he possibly can going through these turns and try not to drop too far back. Yeah, I'm looking throughout the field right now. I'm on the blimp view and guys seem to be getting single file pretty quickly um but uh, oh no nick 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 sorry um i, I just haven't had my camera on nick who almost nick adams who almost went around there um, well, let's see the who grass. the first pass was is kevin Fularski as he does go around right there manages to collect it quite well and we yeah. need to stop talking about nick adams because we <laughs> keep giving him the commentator's curse it's two <laughs> nights in a row I apologize for that, everyone watching. I um, I try not to react to things happening on my screen, but that was so sudden because um, I was just about to call out the fact that uh, uh, Nick uh, Nick Adams and Brandon Bernhardt were, you know, two of the only people side by side on the track, and then that happened. Well, as we'll go ahead and move to the blimp and Grant Carl's wishes here, and just kind of cycle through the field as our leader is about to be exiting turn two. We'll jump back into 13th as we are seeing. Oh, that was the most lucky that I have ever been trying to pick up a battle as it <laughs> looked like Brad Slaughter was about to make a move on Casey Shoe, but just couldn't quite get it done. Hey, and, and what a recovery by Brad Slaughter Jr. right now, um, you know, running up to 13th now, uh, still down six positions from his start, but. Yeah, he was running last place uh, for a little while there due to the, the incident. So, um, I mean, cautions have certainly helped him and other people wrecking has helped him. But uh, man, re really, really great recovery for him. No, that's that is one of those brilliant things. And his car obviously is not hurting too badly. As he is trying to make his way back up into the top 10. And I want to highlight two different people. First off, I'm going to go ahead. Hayden Pistorius, who is our lone Canadian in this race, apparently, according to my information, oh. is up seven positions into sixth. But right now, our mover and shaker is Don Runkle Jr. And ooh, the battle behind him is looking a little bit spicy. He is, yeah. but Don Runkle is up 17 places into 19th. But this battle back here, Blake Zidi was at the forefront of it, but we're starting to see a few people getting a little bit racy. Yeah, as... I, I think I think they had their moment of patience and uh, the patience, I'm not gonna say is run out, but they're like, you know, when you're out there racing, it's like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just gonna line up and take it slow, but then you see an opening and it's like, well, maybe I'll just oh, take this one. Absolutely, that is one of those things that it's just so very difficult to as a racer to just hold the status quo get yourself moving as we're seeing Blake Zidi end up on the outside and that's going to give a lot of people an opportunity to get around him oh and, and also I want to point out um, well, never mind we, we almost had a battle uh, for second place uh, Blake Gordon rode up real high oh um Someone almost went around, but they held it. That was the uh, was like 66 of uh, Brian Kidda. Almost lost it, but he kept it uh, uh, going straight. All right, I got to get back up to the front. Especially because it's looking like Alan Elwood is about to get his car down below Blake Gordon. And that should be able to get him that position. And with the lineup right behind him, Blake's probably going to lose a few positions in this process. Yeah, you know, I've seen this being set up for the past few laps, and, and you know, to Blake's credit, he wasn't trying to lay down a block or anything like that. I mean, uh, Alan got the uh, uh, his nose in there, and 
Um, Blake's going to run on the outside and do his best to hold it, but I, I don't think he'll be able to on this turn. No, and with the gap that they have, the smartest move for him is going to be, in my opinion, let Cameron Hearn, Michael Stroll, all of them get themselves around him while there is still a gap behind Michael Stroll for him to slot in and be able to just hold on, live for another day, because we're only 54 laps into 150. It's time for him to just go ahead, be patient. He just did that. Gets himself back into his regular rhythm. He was running offline. The guys in front of him have had to have killed their tires, overheated them just ever so slightly, trying to keep on that low line while Blake got to run a little bit softer of a line. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, the other thing to consider there, I mean, you know, Blake was trying to hold that outside with the hopes that perhaps one of the guys on his inside would have some sort of issue. And he'd be able to jump in front of them. Um, you know, if you can pinch someone down there, you know, if they're running a line they're not familiar with, it's very easy to get loose on corner exit. Uh, you know, and you don't want this. It seems to get tight on, on entry. Um, if they get tight on entry, they might run right into you. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that's what he was hoping for. Maybe, you know, see if he just, you know, have forced one of them into a mistake and then you tuck in. But wisely gets in, back in line, uh, Blake Ford back to the. Well, and we were talking about it earlier, Brad Slaughter Jr has made up two more positions, get himself into 11th. Hey, and you, know, you were talking about the big mover, uh, you know, our hard charger, excuse me. Um, currently, that is a, a tie between Gail Brooks and Cal Filarski. Um, so uh, they're up, each up 17 positions, uh, uh, fighting to get that uh, hard charger award. And right now it is, Gail Brooks is the only person with that 17 positions as Calvin Filarski fell back one position to where now he's only made up 16 spots. Yeah, it's still a lot of racing to go. <laughs> but, a um, lot of racing, but that's still a great run from both of them to have been moving up that far. Yeah, you know, look, I'm seeing throughout the field there's a lot of guys that have made some big moves. Uh, uh, Hayden Pistorius is up seven spots. Delonte Ballard's up seven spots. Uh, Gail Brooks, 17. Eric Wineland, 12. Uh, Don Runkle Jr., 12. I mean, there, there's some guys that have made some uh, uh, a significant number of passes uh, tonight. Oh, yeah, we get caution, caution out. is out and waiting for it to, you know, catch up to me to where I can figure out. It was the 14 um, of Zach Edwards. All right, so I've got him getting passed. So let's see. Oh, that's a... Uh, it may just go a little bit further back and... I was going to say, as much as our bosses hate us using that re <laughs> rewind, I, sometimes you need to. And but, hey, nobody's the boss of me, so... <laughs> well... I definitely think that that was one of those. The spotter didn't quite call that one out. And Zach Edwards just came down. Luckily, they were able to collect it, and there's not any damage. But holy mother is everyone coming into the pits right now. Well, not everyone we got some guys quickly shuffling up to the top because they've stayed out we've got tyler hensley uh travis mcquistion uh kyle cooper chris matthews um and that's like, definitely that, that's it. it yeah i wow that's um that's bold i mean you have to look at it i mean that's lap times are down well significantly and alan elwood win, wins the race off of pit road so once everyone cycles through, he is going to be our leader. And he I, just I'll, I'll made a much better pit stop. And it's somewhat surprising to me because Thomas Baresi had a shorter time on pit road today. Well, yeah, his pit lane, Thomas Baresi's pit lane time was earlier or shorter, but... Uh... Elwood did win the time uh, in his pit stall. He had a shorter time in the pit stall, um, which I think really helped him there. 
Um, you know, he had, I think he may have had the fastest uh, on the track. And, and for our viewers that aren't familiar with iRacing, um, basically uh, your pit time is determined by where you're able to position your uh, car in the box. Um, so, uh, you know, it's in real life, we don't have real pit crews. So uh, basically iRacing says, if you can get it centered in your box uh, really well, uh, you're gonna have a, a better pit stop time, generally speaking. If you hit your marks exactly, and one of the best things that I can say, but I know Carl can't, is the better graphics you have, you can actually set it up to where you have physical pit crew members out there waiting for you. So you can actually see specifically where you need to center yourself. And I'll admit, it helps immensely. Hey, I, 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 first of all, I don't know that it helps you that much. Uh, maybe you should have a picture well, member uh, telling you about the speed. Um, well, I mean, that's a different story. <laughs> I'm um, very good at speeding on pit road. Hey, you know, uh, I think all of us have gotten uh, hit with the speeding bug at some point. But, um, yeah, so uh, let's talk about our leaders right now. Uh, you know, Tyler Hensley uh, uh, running first. Uh, he's up uh, 10 spots. Uh, Travis McQuistion in second up 28 spots. Kyle Cooper in third up 21 spots. Um, uh, whoever else had stayed out with them, I forget who it was. Was it Chris Madden who stayed out maybe? Oh, Kyle Cooper. He, he did go ahead and uh, – oh, no, no, sorry. So Kyle Cooper is up there. There was someone else that stayed out with them, if I'm not mistaken, um, and he pitted uh, the lap after everyone else. Um, I guess he didn't want to be there, a sitting duck. Um, well, so, it's um, not the wrong idea to where – these guys on fresh tires are going to really put a lot of pressure on, but we do have the advantage that these guys get to dictate the restart and it's hard to pass as Tyler Hensley is off and gets a great jump. Travis McQuiston is dropping down to avoid anyone getting down to that low line on him. And he's gonna be holding up some of those guys on fresh tires like Alan Elwood, and no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> well, and, you know, and, and the thing is here, you know, you, you look at these guys that made this move, they're not trying to win the race with this move. This isn't going to, they're not going to suddenly be able to hold off these guys who have been fast all race and now also have fresh tires. They're just trying to gain more positions than, you know, where they were previously. So they may fall back quite a bit, but, you know, you still got Travis Question. he's in, fourth he's up 26 spots i mean you know it's it's still an improvement from where he was well and with the exception at this point that last green flag run that we had it's a pretty safe bet that we're gonna have another caution most likely before as randy bechtel crashed oh, oh. and somehow the there's the yellow flag i have no idea what just happened there that was wild so I'm going to go ahead and move to the blimp before we go to this one. Oh, I'm on the blimp. It didn't help very much. <laughs> ah, we just had a little bit of a checkup right there. And the 71 of Guile Brooks. We're going to call that a little bit of commentator's curse too. But, oh, that, that caused a whole lot. And Don Runkle Jr. is showing up as having crashed there. I'm not exactly sure where that one actually came from. Oh, that. Oh, Kyle Brooks. I thought he was clear after what we just saw. And no, Don Runkle Jr. gets whoever that was on the inside coming in. Yeah, that that was, that was an unusual wreck there. Um, I, I the, the caution came out extremely late and. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. I don't know if I've ever seen one quite like that with the uh, caution coming out so late. And that was um, J.J. O'Dell. I think it was generally because it looked like everyone managed to keep their car straight. It wasn't until the leaders were running the risk of coming around to the carnage that it decided, you know what, yeah, that, let's throw out the caution. That, that's entirely possible, but I, I, I do wonder if caution had come out earlier. Perhaps some of those guys could have avoided that, but... Um, Hey, it is what it is. That's uh, that's eye racing for you sometimes. It doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense to us, but the logic has to be sound. I mean, um, never mind. I won't say anything negative about <laughs> eye racing. <laughs> I, I, lo I love eye racing. I encourage everyone to play it. it, 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 it uh, sorry, not play it. You don't play eye racing. It's not a game. 
It um, is a game. But <laughs> it is a simulation. Thank it you very much. It is the That's... best darn racing simulator I've ever run. I, that, that, me saying that's a simulation is how I justify spending all the money on it that I do. So uh, we um, won't talk about how much money I've spent on it because of my wife may be within earshot. <laughs> but while we are back under caution, and eh, no, that's probably only two to go. I was gonna say let's throw it a commercial, but we'll wait for the next one before we hit that one up. But the biggest thing I can see is you know what brad slaughter jr is now up into 10th really only made up one position in that process but again continues his charge back towards the front yeah i mean look I, he doesn't have to make up a whole lot every single time you know spot here spot there um i i, I based on what i've seen on discord i know that Brad Slaughter is someone who wants a good finish very badly. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to pull the uh, standings here and let's see how he's been doing this season. Um, not so hot. I mean, he has not had a, a single top 10 this year. But I know the guy, I've seen it uh, week and week, uh, week after week. And um, I, I just think we got to, he's got to have a race go right for him at some point. I think we're going to see him uh, put together some good finishes. As the lights on the pace car are off, which means we are on the verge of going racing once again. 74 laps in the books when we hit the stripe. Nearly halfway as Alan Elwood dictates the start. Waits a little bit longer than everyone has. Gets moving. And right now, Cameron Hearn timed that about as perfectly as he could. And he is right there. Tyler Hensley is going to slot himself up into third. But Blake Gordon dives down below him. And that outside line has Blake uh, chops a little bit of a hood off. <laughs> but what? it's the right move to make sure he can run his line, keep that position. Yeah, you know, and, and, and we saw last restart you know the guys kind of got single file they are it was restart before i don't know at this point there's been so many cautions and restarts um but at some point you know that they got kind of single file they're very patient we're not seeing that this restart um despite the fact that we are uh, just past the halfway point um we they're, they're very racy right now they're upfield well and this is about the time where you have to really start worrying about where you are positioned on the track but as we start to see right now this pack that oh, we're is, wrecking we're wrecking and uh, no caution yet yet it, it, it looks like everybody is going again that was um unfortunately wow. i saw a name out there of nick adams and yeah and, and and then someone made some contact with him in the following corner um uh, that was um something else right there um uh, you want to shoot back to a replay if we can find it? Well, let's I don't know if we have a... see if I can find anything roughly. Yeah, it might be difficult since it, yeah, it didn't show a rec for that, so um, maybe we won't get to show that. No. Well, but uh, we're going to make an attempt here because it looks hey. like it started just about right here. Maybe. This may have been the aftermath. Yeah, that was the aftermath. Curses. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, that, the software we run, it doesn't uh, it doesn't always pick up things as uh, incidents. Uh, so uh, I can't catch everything, unfortunately. But uh, that was, uh, I just happened to see it on my screen. And that was pretty wild. There were guys uh, shooting all over the track trying to avoid it. As we come back from that replay seeing Braxton DeWeese looking to make up positions. He makes up one more, or he's three back from where he started and really has just not fared all that well tonight. And I think it's just been the caution that's been going on in front of him. 
chaos. I said caution, didn't I? <laughs> oh. Yeah, there hasn't, there hasn't been caution on uh, uh, many occasions, except for, you know, when the Cogsons were out. Well, the, uh, you can't say met not many occasions tonight, sir. Well, no, I'm just saying, I guess I should say not many drivers have shown caution tonight. No, 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 um, as I, we <laughs> jump back, we've got... We almost went three wide there for a few moments with Eric Weinland, Casey Shu, and Tyler Hensley, but everyone's slotting back in. And the one thing I do want to pay attention to is we haven't been on all that long of a run, and we have cars on about three quarters of the track right now. We so had someone just get into the wall hard. Um, 14, it looks like. Um, uh, may have been some contact there from the 88. Um, I couldn't tell, but um, we're still green. That uh, doesn't really help me, but we can see what happens right here as we start to see people making some moves. To where I'm hoping that this is what you were talking about, but no. Yeah, yeah I, I, honestly, normally I'll call it out if they're off pace, but uh, I guess uh, they're not going off pace enough for it to uh, trigger it, so apologies for that. Uh, I, I really thought that was about to be a caution there because he, he almost went around, but that was a good save, and um, we're still green, and I'm thankful for that. Well, and I want to come back up towards the front as Michael Stoll and Thomas Baresi are fighting to get themselves back up with that front group. But they are starting to pull away to where they're nearly one second clear, which may not look like much on this track. That's actually quite a bit of distance they have to make up. Yeah, I mean that that's that's not something you're gonna make up uh, uh, you know in a few moments or anything like that. That's um, that's pretty big lead at a track like this. Especially when you're only talking twenty two second laps as our leader just ran a twenty two point one nine, which is barely over a half a second over his best. Yeah, I mean you know there's still relatively fresh tires when you consider uh, uh, the cautions that we've had. You know, they put it at our leader, and just about everyone put it at lap 61. Uh, um, but, yeah, I, I think, you know, he, he's, he's not far off the pace, but I think he is probably reaching the point that another caution came out. Um, maybe not yet. They, they might try to split thirds uh, you know, with another pit stop. And right now, this is great to see that just about everybody is calmly just running their race as we come to two we're closing in on two-thirds distance there's no reason to push just try to hold your position even though it looks like Blake Gordon may be getting a little bit impatient with the two guys in front of him <laughs> Blake Gordon impatient I, I'm not sure what you're talking about there I, you know what I don't even know why I would say that He's just <laughs> one of the most calm drivers I have ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah, you know, and, and that's going back to what we were saying earlier. I mean, I, there are a lot of really aggressive guys uh, in this league, but again, respectful. I mean, I, 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 I don't really have a vendetta against any single driver out here. Uh, I enjoy racing with them, uh, even though almost every single one of them is faster than me. Um, they really cool group of guys to race with as we see Nick Adams went off track. Well, sorry, he's doing this to himself. Let's see the replay. Uh, yeah, uh, it just shows up. gets really hot coming out of turn four. And he does not give us any reason to not make fun of him for his turn four exits on any track. But our leaders are now officially Coming up to lap traffic, and this is where this could get very interesting with these guys behind him. Yeah, this is what I was wanting to see. I mean, <laughs> you're going to have, uh, um, you know, at least for right now, these guys that are uh, about to go a lap down, uh, maybe another lap down. I think it's just one lap down. They're, 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 they're lined up, so they're not racing. Uh, that won't be so bad, but... If these guys get the racing each other and you're the leader, you're you're gonna have some potentially some trouble getting around them. 
Well, as we see Zach Edwards be a gentleman, get up onto that high line. And right now, the only two that that actually ended up hurting were Cameron Hearn and Blake Gordon because Alan Elwood was able to get up, run his full line without any kind of an issue. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, it didn't hurt him too badly. You still got this kind of three car group that's kind of broken away, but, um, you know, de definitely not something uh, uh, you want to catch the lap car at the right spot. And uh, right here is Elwood. the right spot for Alan Elwood. And it's just a matter of, again, Blake Gordon isn't able to come up all the way out of the turn, get quite the run. And so we're going to start seeing as these guys catch more and more lap traffic, we're going to see a little bit more separation and we'll see if the two trailing cars are capable of getting themselves back up to that quarter panel of Alan Elwood. Yeah, I mean, you got you to ask yourself, you know, is, is I know that Alan Elwood's good, but is he that good right now? Or are these other guys, you know, Cameron Hearn, Blake Gordon, uh, even Thomas Bressy, you know, he's a little further back, but are they kind of just waiting at this point? I mean, it, you know, obviously this isn't like a super speed way where you're like, oh, you don't want to make your move too early, but you also kind of don't want to make your move too early because you get in there, you try to get to his inside, let's say you're only a little bit faster and you can't complete the pass. Well, you could sit to his inside for several laps, burn through your tires, and then you never get a chance to get around them. So, um, you know, sometimes it makes sense just to kind of wait, be patient, and maybe they make a mistake. If they don't, you might have better, you know, tires than them later in the uh, run. Uh, see what happens then. Well, as we are hitting lap 100 in the books, I want to make a quick jump towards the back to the battle for 13th as Shane Theron is currently getting a little bit of pressure from Davey Hendricks, Joe Dinsmore, Sean Carmody. These guys are all starting to line up right behind him as Davey Hendricks goes a little bit slow into the turn. Gets a little bit of a more of a gap from Shane Theron, but They've got a hornet's nest as it looked like Joe Dinsmore was actually about to try to get down below Davy Hendricks as he's waving around on the track and he goes loose into one and two, which is going to give these guys that were sitting around waiting the opportunity get down on that low line and he's going to lose three spots in this process. As yeah, Joe Dinsmore that, gets oh. real loose coming out was, of four. I was just about to say, it, it, he's going to lose these spots if none of these guys are trying to pass and make any mistakes, but Joe collects it, and uh, uh, he's still going straight there. But actually, Davey Hendricks, he's not slow on that outside line to where Joe Densmore is not really able to get much of an advantage, and he's not able to get this pass done, which is somewhat surprising. As well, they you know, are right on it, and Joe gets a little bit squirrely again. I think Davey just told him, uh, buddy, if you're going to keep going down there, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a tap. Well, this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier with our leaders, is it could be that Joe may try to make his move a little too early. He may be faster than him at this point, but it just was not quite that different. Oh! But we kept it straight. That was a heck of a save right there. Um, and now we get to see Joe on the outside. Well, as Joe actually, given that low entry speed right there from Davey Hendricks, Joe was able to make the pass on the outside, which is somewhat surprising. I'm curious if Davey Hendricks, in his quest to be where he was, really kind of burned up his tires. I mean, and you know, now possible. he's starting to struggle. Yeah, yeah, we just saw that there. Um, uh, 40 car. Uh, Sean uh, Carmody is yeah. down below him now. And there is a nice size line waiting, hoping as Sean gets the job done. We've got a line of cars just waiting to take advantage of those few mistakes that he made. Yeah, but you know, we did see it earlier. He can battle on the outside. He, he is clear right now, but he probably doesn't know that. Uh, 
Uh, if I were in his position, I certainly wouldn't try to get on there and chop Pass. him off. And... Ooh, get a little bit of a touch there. And there's nothing wrong with making that kind of an aggressive move as we're starting to see the 93 of Travis McQuiston really start to make a move. But I'm going to make a quick jump back up towards the front here as Michael Stroll is trying to get a move done on Alan Elwood. And I, we were so enthralled at the oh, back caution, as we have caution. caution out. And oh, it's, it's, it's baby it, Hendrix. I it think it was the broadcaster's curse. We did it again. We did. As it just looks like, oh, he was not aware of the fact that he had someone with quite the run, and that collects Kalflarski Kalf in the process. But yeah, I, I think saying that, that was a run, uh, a run was an understatement. <laughs> no, <laughs> he had a that full head of is... steam there. Um, that was uh, who was that there? That's the well, ninety-three. Yeah, that is the ninety-three of Travis McQuiston. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, if we go back to this incident the biggest thing you can tell is your spotter is not going to catch that he's there until you've already committed to your turn in. And that's well, hey, one of the unfortunate things of having the digital spotters is they don't call it until well, how, you, there how, is someone there. How, how about we go live again? We got uh, guys on pit road. Uh, uh, we're going to have a battle pit, off pit road here so, shortly. And, I was going to say, let's um, go ahead and get ourselves to the pit lane camera. See if Alan Elwood can hold this position. Oh, he is not going to a, um... No, we got Cameron Hearn and Blake Gordon. Alan uh, Elwood Tyler. had already fallen Did, back, and I've well, got to see and, 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 yeah. if I can find that. Cameron Hearn, here's the replay, and it helps if I'm no, on the right. Uh, one there, so let's uh, jump back. Oh, he just gets loose in turn one. And that is a very unfortunate error because he loses two positions in the process, stays high to also let Thomas Baresi through. And Michael Stroll was right there on him until the caution came out. And now everyone has made their way through the pit lane and if we manage to stay green for these last 37 laps these guys are definitely going to be good to go not only on fuel but we've seen them get 30 laps on these tires without issue oh yeah absolutely but um and let's see here i'm looking at the number of pits yeah i mean all of our leaders should have another we'll have another set of tires um uh, so i you know, if another caution does come out, it's going to be interesting to see how pit strategy plays out. I think that you might see some guys pit because um, there is a difference on speed uh, with these fresh tires. Well, as we actually see Nick Adams, he is not going to be our leader. He is the first car a lap down. So once we hit one to go, he's going to get the wave around the pace car, get his lap back as we see a little bit of crumple there on the rear end of that Mustang. Yeah, honestly, I think we could probably zoom in on everyone. There's probably a little bit of damage to everyone's cars. Um, it's, it's, it's been a little bit of a rough race, but, um, you know, we had a pretty good green flag run there. And um, I'm not going to lie, have it. normally watching Nick when he gets a wave around is always worth something. Unfortunately, he uh, tries to go a little too hot sometimes to make I, I sure he can get to the back of the field. I think you're just being mean now. Ah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, he collected it. We're good. <laughs> yes, and that may have been a little bit mean, but our leaders are coming up to the restart with Cameron Hearn dictating. He goes right at the start line, gets a great jump. Blake Gordon's right there alongside him, so he's going to be able to get single file going into turn one, get himself into second, and just take off as 
we are seeing everybody get single file all the way back to the battle for fifth with Michael Stroll getting himself up there as Blake Gordon is not going to go softly tonight. He's trying to get that low position on Cameron Hearn. Can't quite get it in one and two, but he is there right now as Cameron goes very wide and that's not going to be good for him as Blake Gordon is our new leader. But Cameron Hearn is not going to relinquish any kind of position, even though he is going to be able to slot himself down onto that low line, leave Thomas Baresi up there. And there's Alan Elwood looking to take advantage of that little bit of a move. But they have managed to slot themselves in and get single file. Well, you know, this is something we've seen over and over in the other series we call uh, Blake Gordon taking the lead, uh, especially at a short track. I mean, I guess usually he doesn't take the lead. He usually just leads all the laps. Um, but uh, we see, hey, look here, uh, Cameron Hearn, uh, uh, think I'm making another move here uh, on Blake Gordon. Well, Blake goes down, block any kind of run he may have had and hold on to that position. There's no denying that Blake is a master at these short tracks. He is well, and, and, and stellar at Martinsville, stellar at Richmond. So, I mean, this is well, a Richmond setup. And, and I think that these guys are realizing, you know, if we have another long green flag run, uh, you know, we just need 29 laps here. This could be the race right here. Um, so uh, they're giving it everything they got right now. And there's no better opportunity to make passes when everybody is still bunched up. Get yourself into the position you want. You don't have to be overly aggressive, but we are into the last third of this race. It's, yeah, well it's into the do last or time. Third, yeah. It's do or die time. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I was saying earlier. I was surprised with the aggressiveness early in this race. Uh, this is the time to go now, though, and I think we're seeing it throughout the field. They, they may look single file, but every guy in this field right now is trying to uh, uh, plan out uh, uh, how they're going to gain the most positions possible uh, for them in this race. So I want to go in here. I want to see what kind of wheel action Cameron Hearn is to where this is, well, not exactly what he himself is seeing. We get to see exactly the wheel inputs that he's making, where he's seeing Blake Gordon as he had to make a little bit of a correction there. But yeah, he, he, in the middle of the corner there, he got a little loose. And uh, you know, we're going to see here if he, if he keeps it a little loose there. Um, but that was actually a pretty good corner. But one of the things you got to be careful with here, I saw him doing the first uh, uh, exit we uh, were following him on is, you know, a, as the banking transitions on the exit of the corner, there's a little bit of a bump there. And uh, if you don't hit that perfectly, your car gets a little light and it wants to go around on you. Well, and the one so, thing that we can show from this specific view is Blake Gordon. He is down to that low line quickly to make sure that there's no way Cameron Hearn is going to be able to make any kind of a dive to get below him. Well, to be fair, that also might just be his line. I, I don't know. I, I Typically at this track specifically, I, I run a very very early entry um it's, it's just how i've always run here um i i tend to uh, uh almost diamond it just kind of oh we got a yellow out as we do and of course because of how long i let that one go there we go it looks like john doble may have been the one to bring this one out Ah, uh, you brought up that exact bump. <laughs> so I'm gonna that that actually may have been the broadcaster's curse in like a different format. We didn't call him out, but we talked about <laughs> what could cause an incident, and there he goes. Hey, we got guys pitting. Oh uh, no no no! I think that was a false alarm. Nah, that was people cheating. But I wanted to bring <laughs> this one up as we go back to John Doble's incident, you can actually see from the roll bar here, as he's hitting the turn right there, you'll see 
a yeah. little bit of a dip in the road, and that's ultimately what's going to cause those kinds of issues. Yeah, if you exit at the correct point, like there, there's a certain spot where the transition's like a lot smoother. Um, alternatively, like there was, uh, you know, I was experimenting with this line. I mean, you can just go straight into the bump and, and just manage your throttle. Um, you know, there, there are things you can do with the throttle to try to keep the car uh, uh, planted. Um, but uh, uh, unfortunately for him in that case, you know, ran, uh, you know, a lot of laps without issues and, and had issues there. But some of the pits, I, I am genuinely surprised that some of these guys uh, near the front um, didn't go ahead and come in. But I guess a lot of that might be due to the fact that how many people we got on the lead lap right now? Uh, uh, we oh, man. have all the way back 28. to 28th on the lead so that's, lap. <laughs> That's probably why people didn't come in. Um, that'd be a lot of spots to make up, but but honestly, if I were running, you know, 27, 26, like I would have pit it. Like, I, I, come get your tires and, and see if you can make something happen. Um, but uh, a lot of guys stayed out there, uh, almost the entire field. Well, most everyone, and we can actually bring this one up. All of our leaders. Their tires are only 10 laps old at this point. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to have a significant fall off after 10 laps, but again, there will be some fall off. So if you can put yourself in position, you're getting one of the guys running at the very back. You won't, there, there's, there's, if you if you have tires, that's the biggest issue. Some of these guys may not have uh, tires, but if you have the tires, just there's no harm in coming in. You're not going to lose any more positions. No, and while we are under caution, I do want to point one thing out. We've brought it up pretty much the whole night. And Mr. Brad Slaughter Jr. after that early incident is up in running in the top 10 in eighth position. Yeah, and hey, I want to talk about hard charger right now. Um, uh, running in 17, or sorry, 12th, we've got Eric Wineland. He's up uh, 17 spots from the start of the race. Um, that's a guy who I, I, I've raced around a lot. Um, I, I raced with him uh, uh, less in this series, more uh, in the uh, Sportsman series we did leading up to uh, the Fuel Premier series. Um, he's aggressive. Uh, and, you know, I think you look at it, you talk about people who can start at the back and cut through the field to try to get up to the front. He's one of the guys I put at the top of my list. He can, he can, he, he can move around people very quickly. As we have the lights on the pace car, off and we are running side by side waiting for this restart as Blake Gordon takes us to the checkered flag waits a reasonable amount does not get the same kind of jump that everyone else has and he is under threat from Cameron Hearn on that outside he got an amazing start but Blake is managing to keep himself there. We have a little bit of a touch, nothing too bad. But Cameron Hearn, I do not know how he got that car in line. Well, you, you said that touch wasn't uh, uh, too bad, but I think that depends on your perspective. Uh, Cameron Hearn might think that was uh, one of the worst. As we have oh, Yellow gosh. back out on the track and Tyler Dolger is the most recent victim. And, oh. Uh, oh, there we, it but, is. But but did we see someone else wrecking behind? Uh, we actually did. It looked like that was a six of John Doble getting oh, loose. Man. To where... He just immediately puts himself into, yeah, just gets loose coming out of the turn, slams the inside wall. I've hit that wall more times than I care to count right now. <laughs> but as we are currently 15 to go, let's hear from our other sponsor for the night, RPM. Hi, everybody. This is Stu Rickard, and I'm part of RPM Missions, and our cause is to raise awareness for human trafficking here in the United States, where currently we have over 300,000 people trapped in slavery, and of that, at least 30% are of little boys and girls under the age of 18. Our goal at RPM Missions is 
debris pool. We would like to see 10,000 people put this human trafficking hotline number into their cell phones so that they can feel deputized and to report suspicious activities when they see it. Our second goal is to raise awareness for more recovery homes that need to be built for these girls and boys that have been rescued from sex trafficking. And the third goal is for folks sitting on the couch, maybe watching this video, to get up and to uh, get energized, to uh, serve others, and to uh, feel the blessing that comes with that. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this video. We thank you so much for visiting our website. And we ask that maybe through your social media circles, you'll help us spread that word. You'll help us stop the bad guys from exploiting our children sexually, mentally, and physically. Thank you. And we are back. For those who haven't, I, I suggest visiting the RPM website. It's a very noble cause. Definitely something that I kind of hope that all of our watchers could get behind. But who knows? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little delirious at this point in the night. The, the, the who knows is a little terrifying, but um, uh, yeah, who knows? Um, so uh, let, let's run through uh, uh, our leaders right now. Uh, let's run through our top 10 since we've got uh, 13 laps to go. In first, we got Blake Gordon, followed by Thomas Bressy in second. In third is Cameron Hearn and Alan Elwood in fourth. Michael Strolls in fifth, and Brad Slaughter Jr. works his way up to sixth. Braxton DeWeese in seventh, uh, which I'm sure his fan club is excited about. Um, uh, let me actually, because everything moving around, we've got some of those out of order. Um, Delonte Ball uh, Ballard is in eighth. Uh, Justin Morton in ninth. And Hayden Pistorius rounding out our top ten. So I am going to leave the tower up for the rest of this to where I have a feeling we only have 12. We're going to have 11 to go as we come to green here. And I have a feeling... I have a feeling we're going to have one more caution. You know, uh, cautions breed cautions. And well, especially and when they happen when they happen at the end of the race like this, um, you know, look, everybody realizes there's 12 laps to go. Um, we got to go, go, go. And we're going to go right here. As Blake Gordon makes the right move, goes right at the start line, gets himself a decent jump. He's going to be able to run his line out of turn number two as yellow is back out. Oh, God. Nick. Nick. I got to see. Just lights it up out of turn four is my guess. Yeah. yeah. What, what, was that on the start of the race? That was the start. He was at the very back, so he had uh, managed the throttle through the whole thing. And Nick Adams, he is a lap down at this point, running in 32nd. But you know who this is going to benefit? He is Blake Gordon. We're not, not going to call him a Blake caution, though. We're not calling him Blake cautions anymore. Um, this well. upsets Blake. <laughs> <laughs> but in uh, all honesty, the more laps that he's capable of running under caution right now, is going to make it to where he has less laps he's going to need to defend from these guys who have shown tremendous speed through this entire race. The yeah. only thing he needs to do is make sure he can time his jumps much like Cameron Hearn and Thomas Baresi were doing at the very beginning of this race. Yeah, look, I think um, he's in a very similar situation to... to where I was in our, our Thursday night TNT race uh, on Ghostfire Media, um, where I, I won the race because of, uh, uh, you know, the caution coming out near the end. I was much slower. And, and this the only difference here is that Blake Gordon's not much slower than the guys uh, behind him, but I was slower than the guys behind me. And um, the caution coming out helped me. It could very well help him here, but um, I, I'm sure he's probably a little upset because he did have a pretty good restart there. Well, and that was easily the best he has had since taking this lead. But the question really does become, is it going to be enough? Yeah, that's a good question. Hey, since we got the tower up, can you actually change it over to uh, show the gaps? Yeah, I can do that. 
think that might make a little more sense. We're uh, rounding uh, out to the end of the race here. Um, so uh, we'll see. You know, we've got, we've got Thomas Bressy on the outside. That's not going to be the preferred uh, place to restart. Um, you know, but if you can get a good jump, you know, you can be battling there side by side for first. But Cameron Hearn's been fast all night. He's going to restart in third. So he's going to have that inside line. And we can't count out Alan Elwood. And look at Brad Slaughter Jr. up to fifth. Um, he, 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 that was an amazing maybe. restart. I'm actually checking to see. Yeah, he's in, he's in fifth. But it showed him briefly show up to the fourth, but he is in fifth right now. As Alan Elwood is cheating to the outside because that's where he's going to be for this restart. As that generally means that we are two to go, which means we will be starting with five laps left in this race. Ready to go. I'm, I'm excited about this. I love shootouts like this. Um, you know, obviously wish we'd had uh, long green flag runs, but uh, shootouts can be fun. Let's do it. No, this is this is going to be brilliant because we have seen some of the best racing on these opening laps after a caution. So these guys, they're definitely raring to go. And this is white knuckle time, sweaty palms, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> These guys at the front, they basically know no errors means a podium. But yeah, and that's my not question what is these those, guys want. Yeah, how how long before we have our first caution uh, nope. <laughs> after the restart here? I'm not saying it if we are going to have one. <laughs> As Blake goes early, there's the jump that he needed to make. He gets clear by over a car length. Gets himself onto that line oh, as oh, Michael oh, Stroll around. is around. As there is the, the caution. He, he got hit from behind. Um, I, I didn't see who yes. that was. My car, my scrolling to oh. get back up to that incident. I had no we had hope some there. Too. Uh, the four car also went around. Um, Let's see what happens to Michael Stroll field. here. As he enters the turn. Oh, he just gets tagged by Brad Slaughter Jr. That was just a missed braking point from Brad Slaughter Jr. Not ready for where Michael Stroll was braking and just ended up getting himself around. Yeah, let's let's try to take a look, see what happened with the four of Casey Shue. Um, I was gonna say, I'm just going to the blimp here to where we can maybe see what happens here. Is not necessarily seeing anything in that view, but oh, okay. Let's go this way. Let's let's do my cheater's way of just watching Casey Chu. Yep, uh, he he is happened right after, um, and he just uh, he looks like he came down. Oh. oh yeah, they were about to go three wide, and he came down and just really got tangled up at the exact wrong moment and oh hold on a second i'm seeing a whole lot more red here i think that may have been people that potentially just uh stopped for uh, the incident um because i know it was like cal Filarski was one of them but i mean look at look at cal up there he just comes to a complete stop that's that's beautiful right there that that's the way you stop for yeah. one of those <laughs> but let's get ourselves back to live. And this is gonna be a green-white checker. So once we go back to racing, these guys are going to have one lap of green, then we're gonna get the white flag, then the checker. So there's essentially two laps worth of racing. Well, that's if another caution doesn't come out on that first lap. Well, Once we get the white flag, if a caution comes out, uh, you know, white flag comes out, the next flag ends the race. It doesn't matter if it's a caution, green flag, or a checker flag, doesn't matter. Um, but if we get a caution on that first lap, we'll try it again. We're going to try it up to three times tonight. So we're starting to see a little bit of chatter in the YouTube comments. Honestly, what ended up happening to Michael Stroll there, I can honestly agree with J.J. O'Dell. He got down on the line, started to break, and 
he had to check up for the car in front of him and it just turned into a bit of a, an accordion effect. That's the kind of things that happen on restarts on short tracks. Yeah, look, I, I, I you're right. These things happen. I, I, this wasn't like a blatant, like, you know, turn someone, um, you know, and then it's kind of like what I've said, you know, I've said this many times before, when you're assigning faults in a wreck, it is almost never going to be a hundred percent someone's fault. Cause even if you get wrecked from behind, there's a good chance that you could have done something differently. Um, you know, there's possibly something you did to contribute to that. Uh, but a couple weeks ago when Blake Gordon ran in the back of me, I had hit the wall right beforehand. Well, I mean, you hit a wall. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I was still going. I was still going until Blake hit me. All right, but we are about to go green flag racing. Pace car is off. Blake Gordon is ready to start this. Gets that early jump. But Thomas Baresi was ready for it that time. But Blake gets himself down in front. Thomas Baresi was not giving him any kind of space there. <laughs> but these guys are fighting oh hard as they are wrecking. And it is yellow flag time once again. Oh. And oh. Well, from what I'm seeing, it's Tyler Dolger. And yeah, no, that was not him. He may have been involved in there because there's no back end on his car right now. But you know what? We're doing it this way. You know what? That may have involved him there, but it looks like the 80... No, this was in front of him. Oh, good lord. This is just chaos. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out specifically where this was. Well, I see the right, 88 the 21, went around. The 21 yeah, and the yeah. 56 are getting together. And now the question is, is can I find them in a timely manner on my timing and scoring? Because no, no, I can't. So that was Delonta Ballard, to where at least I got the right person this time. All right. So, uh, oh, that's just a little bit of craziness as Delonta comes down, not realizing that he's three wide right there. Yeah, that, that's going to happen right there. But I, I do want to point out, we brought this up earlier. Um, driver chat has been disabled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there were some guys who were uh, very passionate uh, after that incident. That is the best <laughs> way to put that because. <laughs> I have a feeling that there were lots of expletives there. Yeah, you know, honestly, if I had been in that situation, I, I look, I mean, I'm sure everyone on the track right now is upset that, that happened because um, you're wanting to end the race. Like, you know, you, 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 you've had the potential to have good green flag runs. Um, uh, so I think everyone wants to see that happen. They want to you know, see a good battle for the uh, lead to finish this race out. Um, let's see, let's see good battles throughout the field. Let's, let's get this, let's get this thing finished, guys. Well, and unfortunately, I cannot remember how many green-white checkers we are going to get. Three. Oh, it's three, three. green-white checkers, so we get yeah. to do this one more time if it happens? Correct. So Ooh, we are on gonna be, uh, number two. Yeah. That, the only, now the person that is annoyed by all of this most is Blake Gordon. Well, first of all, I, I, having known Blake for a long time now, uh, uh, you know, and I've raced with him a while, like, um, Blake, uh, uh, Blake, I think, gets annoyed anytime he has to drive around under caution. Um, <laughs> it, it, I think that's the, probably the ultimate irony of us talking about Blake cautions. I think Blake wants to be able to racing every lap. And I know these leaders do, too. You look at Thomas Bressy, Alan Elwood, Cameron Hearn, uh, even Braxton DeWeese, who's up in fifth now. Um, these guys want a shot at him, and you, you aren't going to get a shot at him if and you just keep going under caution. Well, I'm going to say that probably the best, the person that liked that the most was Thomas Baresi. Blake got That's in front true. of him. He has He's another gonna shot to get a great restart and get in front of him. Yeah, well, let's see what happens here. Uh, pace car lights are out, so we are going to go green flag racing uh, when they come back around this uh, next corner. So we will see as... 
Blake Gordon is set and ready, and Thomas Baresi has had Blake's number on the last few restarts with one exception. As the pace car is off, Blake's ready to go. Blake jumps. Doesn't quite get enough clearance, but he can get himself up there. And we are going to continue going at this point. I'm waiting to see. Are we going to oh, see? We are three wide. Yes. Oh, oh, they're okay. wrecking. They're wrecking. We get to. No. Oh, there is. There that, is that is not a oh, caution. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. There are so many people involved in that. All right. This one's uh, going to be a uh, go to the blimp. Go to the uh, first one I can find. And unfortunately, the fan club's not going to be happy. Mr. Braxton DeWeese. Oh, yeah, just, just, yeah, just that initial contact. You kind of have that happen. The cars just kind of get stuck together. Um, but, man, that was a lot of cars in that. I, I um, don't even want to go down the list because... Uh, there's going to be very few names that we are. Yeah. Not many people are going to be happy, but on the bright side, Braxton does manage to keep it together. Granted, he has now fallen back into 25th. But well, hey, I, I, he's I, I, running. I wanna, yeah, I want to point out something right now. I want to confirm right here. Uh, okay. So, um... Eric Wineland and uh, uh, Travis McQuistian um, are right there together for the Hard Charger Award. Um, Eric Wineland's running in 8th. He's up 21 spots. Travis McQuistian's running in 10th. He's up 20 spots. Um, so, uh, I, honestly, even, even in our other leagues where we don't uh, you know, have an official award for you know, most positions gained, I love tracking guys uh, that make up a lot of positions, um, and I'm glad that this league, uh, you know, actually calls it out. Because um, it's fun to see, you know, who can make up those positions, who's making those quality passes, that sort of thing. So we're having a little battle for that at the uh, before the end of this thing. Uh, that's the second battle I'm watching outside of this incredible battle we're going to have for the lead here. Yeah, we get Thomas Baresi gets one more shot at this. And this is going to be the one that he has to make count. Because if we get another caution, we're finishing under caution. Yeah, and I mean, look, I think, I mean, I can't speak for him, but I, th I think Blake Gordon wants this badly. I mean, he, he's shown over and over that he can do this in the AOLL. Um, I think that, you know, he, he wants a win in this league to show that it's not just the AOL that he can do it in. He can get wins in, in multiple leagues, and, and he's run really well tonight. You know, he's not had a dominant car like we've seen many times from him before, but um, has had a good, quiet run, and has now put himself in position. Um, we're going to see if, if Blake Gordon can, can you know, find himself uh, the winner tonight, as we've seen him do so many times. And we've seen it. This league has not really had the opportunity to see the Blake Gordon that we know. He is an all-around great racer. Last week we got to chat with him on the road course. We've got to chat with him. Well, this actually will be the only time we've had an opportunity to talk to him in this league. And he has sung the praises of these guys in post-race interviews in the AOLL and there's no denying that front to back there's a lot of talent in this league as we are coming back to try to make our last restart and let's see if Blake can trick Thomas Baresi one more time and he goes real early that time before the start line and gets himself moving, gets slotted in. And that is most likely going to be all she wrote for Thomas Baresi's opportunities, unless a very uncharacteristic issue for or, Blake Gordon. I mean, I, I'm not going to suggest that he do this, but will Thomas Baresi consider giving him the bumper here as we uh, go on our final lap? And it's looking like a possibility. As he is right there, Blake is not able to get much separation. 
it looks like he's running the line of holding just off as Blake Gordon gets the win tonight at USA International. Thomas Baresi in oh, second. Oh, oh, they are working, crossing the start finish line. And that would be Mr. Braxton DeWeese once again was tangled up in all of that. And uh, that was the I, earlier one. <laughs> that, that, that's oh, the earlier I am one. <laughs> really a little bit back. And you know what? It didn't actually give it to me. Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. It, well, let's see. Cal, Cal Flarsky. Let's see what happens here as he goes. Oh, synchronized. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Man. So we have our results as Blake Gordon's going to burn the tires to the ground. Let's run through our finishing order for the night. Blake Gordon is our winner. Thomas Baresi in second. Cameron Hearn in third. Fourth is Alan Elwood. Fifth, Hayden Pistorius. Sixth, Justin Morton. Seventh, Eric Wineland. Eighth, Tyler Hensley. Ninth, Shane Theron. Tenth, Travis McQuiston. All right, in 11th, we have Joe Dinsmore. 12th is Norm Pelletier. 13th, Brandon Bernhardt. 14th, Delonte Ballard. 15th, Kyle Cooper. 16th, Sean Carmody. 17th, Davey Hendricks. 18th, Christopher Matthews. 19th, Blake Zidi. And in 20th, we have Jonathan Gervin. All right, 21st is Kyle Brooks. 22nd, Casey Shue. 23rd, Brian Kida. 24th, Boomer Logan. 25th, Brad Slaughter Jr. 26th is Tyler Dolger. 27th is Cal Flarsky. 28th is Zach Edwards. 29th, Nick Adams. 30th is Braxton DeWeese. And 31st, we have Randy Bechdel. 32nd, Michael Stroll. 33rd, John Doble. 34th, J.J. O'Dell. 35th, John, Don Runkle Jr. And in 36th, uh, rounding out our field, that person who did not race, it's me. <laughs> All right, let's bring up Mr. Gordon. Hey, Blake, you've got Josh and Carl in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, guys, what's going on tonight, man? Uh, that's a lot more pep in your voice than I hear normally. Yeah, that, <laughs> I can't believe it. Honestly, this was not expected at all. Uh, these guys are so fast over here in this league. Um, I was... I've been coming in every week like okay a top 10 would be great practice I was fast so I'm like okay you know maybe a top five is on the table um but then just the way everything fell at the end of this race somehow just ended up in the right spot I couldn't be happier like it's it's so tough and just to try to hold those guys off and just man that's the hardest I've had to drive in a while even though it was a lot of yellow flags but Man, they were filling my mirror up, and I had to I had to push it so they didn't get the chance to uh, send me there on those last green white checkers. Well, I, I have to ask you, Blake, because you know, as you mentioned, there were a lot of cautions, um, and um, so restarts were a very big deal. And you, you had to do several restarts from the lead. Um, you know, we saw, especially at the end there, you got a really good jump. Um, what were you trying to do to uh, to, to get a good jump? Were you, were you doing anything specifically or were you just kind of uh going with your gut um yeah it was just not really anything specifically just trying to pick a good jump point um i knew if i could get the restart going in the in the corner it was really hard for like the outside line to hold with you um just because i had restarted second third fourth fifth like i've been all over the place for all these restarts so i had like a lot of experience uh restarting in all those spots so i was seeing what like the other guys are doing like what cameron was doing what pressy was doing like when they were leading and everyone was going around the same point and the outside line would like rarely be able to like stick with them so i'm like all right you know what i'm gonna go at the same point they did and it worked out there's one restart actually and i want to talk about this real quick i um missed the shift in the third so i think cameron was able to stick on my outside a little bit more and I ended up missing my break point like the next lap because I'm in Discord like complaining. It's like, oh my God, I hugged my shift. And then I slid through the corner a little bit, slid up into him. I, I hope I didn't damage him too much because that's not how I wanted to, uh, you know, race him tonight. Everyone up here, like we were giving each other so much room and patience. That's what I've really been enjoying. Like we're giving each other so much hell out there. But 
it's been clean. Like the front of the field tonight was pretty clean. I don't know what was going on, you know, behind us all night, especially there at the end. But man, I really wish we would have been able to have green flag there at the end. I don't think I was the best guy, but yeah, I think they would have got me. But I'll take it. I'm not going to complain at all. That was awesome. So what was going through your mind when we ended up having th all three green white checkers? Was it a little bit of panic every time knowing that Baresi was getting really good restarts with you? And it looked like he almost gave you the bumper a few times going into one. Yeah, he did. Um, and you got ex to gotta expect it. You know, you're the leader at a short track. The bump's coming. You, you just have to plan for it. You, I mean, I don't blame anyone for doing it. Honestly, that's just kind of how short track races go. So do what you got to do, right? But yeah, it's just every restart was another chance to mess it up. And that's just what I really didn't need. I just wanted to get a good jump, get the two laps in be done and over with but you know once that third one happened i'm like all right can we just wreck again please turn one turn two i don't know <laughs> let's just seal a deal again but you know we finally got the full two laps in and yeah yeah it was, it was nerve-wracking i was man that's the most anxious i've ever been most nervous i've ever been like in the last two years running this league aoll the three weeks i was in ivrl like that was definitely like the most like nervous wreck i've been for restarts I mean, with the one exception, it didn't show all that much. And I have to commend another great run from you and happy to get to talk to you first in another league. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's good to, you know, get the win over here. Um, I was close at Daytona, 79 and a half laps. You know, the wreck on the last lap was frustrating. I was nowhere at Homestead. Just had to survive at Sebring, and tonight I felt like was really my first chance to run up in the front, kind of show what I can do over here with these guys. So I'm, I'm just absolutely ecstatic to be here right now in victory lane. It feels good. Well, honestly, I don't want to keep you from uh, celebrating with your team because they're a bunch I of think good they guys. <laughs> I nah, think they all quit. I think they're great. You've still got a few down go there. Well. We had to take care of Nick in our team chat tonight, so you're welcome for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did that in the booth yeah <laughs> too so but no great run from you tonight thanks guys thank you sir yep you guys have a good night yep. thanks for the broadcast thanks again to all the admins and the sponsors for uh putting this league on i've had a blast the last four weeks it's been fun all right well we'll send you back to your team here and um yeah. All right, our second place is actually in the waiting room, excited to chat with us, apparently. Good evening, sir. You've got Josh and Carl in the booth. You got a copy? Good evening, gents. How are we? So it's seeming like we get to talk to you a lot. Uh, well, I mean, it's only the second time, but, you know, <laughs> you've difficult also been starts on... to the year. We're improving. You've been on the podcast, too, so, I mean. That's true. So what was going through your mind after you had to keep restarting on the outside through those green white checkers? Um, I wish we could have just gone green probably. Um, cause I mean, I obviously I didn't get to I didn't really have to fortunately restart on the top the whole night until, you know, of course, right at the end, go figure. But um, so I was trying to, you know, kind of getting it dialed in and that last one, I just, I mean, I needed like that half a car length better of a launch than, than I got. And I did better like the one before. And even the one before that, I thought I was better. And I think I probably could have gotten there if, you know, if we didn't have that last one or something, but, or even if it, you know, even that last launch, I probably would have been okay if we had one more, one more lap, but. It was uh, it was a mess there at the end, which is unfortunate because honestly, it was I mean, it was rough getting going and whatnot. But, you know, once we actually had a few runs in there, the, the racing up front was pretty enjoyable. It was a lot of clean, good short track racing up there. And, you know, it was uh, just a shame it kind of had to end that way, I guess, with uh, all the nonsense. But, you know, it, it happens sometimes. But, uh, hey, good. You know, I'll take another second, um, you know, decent turnaround, I guess, for uh and how the first race started and maybe what could have been the second race, but uh, you know, we'll just keep rolling. You know, it's a mixed night for, for my team, unfortunately. And I'll just, that's the way short tracks are though sometimes. So we'll uh, go on to bigger and better things next week, I suppose. So I have to ask you, you know, 
those, those final laps, uh, the multiple times we had final laps with the multiple green white checkers, uh, you know, you were right there on Blake Gordon. Did, did you consider giving him the bumper a little bit, or uh, were you just gonna sit back there and you know see if you make a mistake? No, I mean, I I was gonna try and get to him, and I I think one or two of the restarts, I don't quite remember when. I know I kind of got into him a little bit, and you know, there was a point I think. Um, I think it was the one restart. I restarted third, I think, is when they went off into three and he uh, and Blake slid off into three and kind of pushed Cameron up out of the way. And I was like, should I try and move him right now? Because it was like still 10, 12 to go. I was like, should I just move him now and try to get the lead or do I just give him a little nudge and maybe see if I can get him loose, which I kind of did, but it just not not enough to move him. And then, you know, and then the um, the caution fest began after that. So I guess I should have just tried to make the move right then and there. But um yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't like to just dump people or you know just drop kick people if they, you know, if they don't deserve it. I mean, yeah, I race people hard, and I think people that have been in fuel know that, um, and I'm, I'm aware of it. But um, you know, Blake and I didn't have any issues tonight. We raced clean when we were around each other, and you know, I didn't. Certainly, I was going to try and move them, but I wasn't. I wasn't just going to fly off into into the last corner and just clean them out. But you know, still a good result, and uh, you know, at least you know had a car pointed in the right direction with uh with no damage so you know that's always a plus well it's, it was certainly a lot better than a lot of people tonight uh uh we saw a lot of cautions um but you know th throughout you know pretty much the whole race i mean you were up in the top five um you know we we, we know that you're you're really good but um what, what did you attribute that to what, what did you think was going well for you tonight that was able to keep you in you know that position uh like the qualifying lap i guess that i pulled out of my butt i, I didn't know where, usually i'm not very good at qualifying and haven't been for a while so i mean just being able to get the pole and and kind of control the race at the beginning there um i think helped because I, I mean we saw i think there was like what two green flag passes really for the lead and both of them involved some form of contact so it was hard to make clean passes and you know even if that's the way you kind of have to do it. I know most people don't just love booting people out of the way every five seconds. So it just kind of made it a little easier at the beginning. And then I was worried once I lost the lead, I was like, well, great. There goes that advantage. Cause I thought maybe I was getting beat a little bit on the longer run at the beginning. And then we had that longer stretch in the middle where I was like fourth. And I actually felt like I was kind of catching the leaders and then we had a caution and then went green, another caution, the usual stuff. But I mean, honestly, just it was the track position and, and pitting at the right time and just trying to manage that. You just had to, I mean, and that's how a lot of these short track races end up being when it's really tif, you know difficult to pass. You just really have to be very strategic with when you make your pit stops or when you don't or whatever. So you can just, you know, take care of your tires and keep the best track position you can. So my biggest question, and this comes from reading through the Discord earlier, what happened last time the uh, fuel was here? Um, something similar, although probably not not similar to the last 10, 15 laps of tonight. But the last thing I remember when we were here in the cup cars is I ran like top five most of the night. And on like the last restart, we had like the top two got together off of two and they were side by side and we junked a ton of cars and I went from running top five the whole night to like 20 something. So, um, but that's how these go sometimes. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, fortunately it went a little better for me this time around. I, you know, again, unfortunately, you know, I know my teammates weren't quite as lucky tonight and you know, that's unfortunately how it goes, but yeah, it was, uh, at least for me a little better than last time, but, um, like it wasn't too dissimilar, but you know, We'll, uh, we got a few more tracks like this, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens as we uh, as we keep going here. So next week, we're off to the tricky triangle. What are your so, uh, thoughts on Pocono? I mean, uh, it's a home track for me, so you know I'm excited to go there. It's always fun going there. It's def I mean, it's it's tricky. It's uh, you know I, I do, I've done okay there uh, in the past. You know, I've won a few races there. I've kind of blundered a few races there and just been kind of nowhere in some others. So it just, it depends, but I'm looking forward to it, getting to a, you know, a bigger track where I feel like, you know, maybe we all have a chance to kind of spread out and kind of just run a race for a change and, you know, kind of, 
get away from what happened tonight, hopefully. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. And then uh, I think we have Darlington after that, which I'm really looking forward to as well. So i got a good couple of tracks coming up. But yeah, definitely looking forward to Pocono next week. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, absolutely, man. It's it, uh, you know great run from you tonight. Uh, you know, second place finish again, and should help you out with the uh, championship points. Uh, but uh, uh, really good talking with you, uh, Presley, and we'll uh, uh, visit talk to you again next week. I hope to. I'll catch you all later. All right, thank you very much, sir. All right, I think that is gonna do it for us tonight. Yeah, it is almost 11 o'clock, so. Yeah, I was going to say, for those of us on the East Coast, it's bedtime. <laughs> but it was surprisingly a great race despite all of the caution. A lot of action at the front especially. And you know what? I'm looking forward to next Monday. Hopefully you're not going to hear me in the booth. You're going to get to see my pink monster out there on – Pocono because uh, it's uh, phrasing phrasing oh yeah I guess um, that, that yeah does make uh, sense. yeah so uh yeah so Pocono next week for the fuel series uh what else we got going on with uh Ghostfire Media this week uh um, all right uh, tomorrow we have the IVRL live from Michigan we will have the TNT live from Martinsville on Thursday as always the podcast on Friday Sunday, we will have the AOL Cup Series live from Michigan. It is the last race before the chase starts. And then Monday night, we'll have fuel at Pocono. Well, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting week of racing. It's going to be a great one. We have a mix of high speed. We have some short tracks thrown in there. And then, honestly my favorite two and a half mile track <laughs> all right well that'll do us here for tonight uh on behalf of the ghostfire uh media crew um i want to say thank you to everyone for watching um and we'll see you next time thank you everyone thank you for watching iRacing on the ghostfire media network